From your local news leader, this is NBC 10 News Today. The vote that has America talking, another controversial new law involving abortion, details on Alabama's decision to ban it, and the punishment for doctors refusing to comply. And the community grieving after a teenage boy is honoring good works, how Bauchenville is broadening efforts to help those in need. Plus, upgrades coming from Monroe Civic Center, but how will it affect traffic, and is the city doing anything to ease the flow? Those answers coming up. Good morning, it is 5 a.m. I'm Randy Ayala. I'm Chris Immersion. How we doing? Happy doing Thursday. Great. Happy Thursday. I like the way she says, how you doing? Sounds like Wendy Williams. -esque. That is not a how compliment. You, how you doing? <laughs> That's how you doing? not how I say no. it. East Coast vernacular. No. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, I, I'm not Chris, a hate on Randy. I'm just saying, I think he's a Chris great loves to hate. I'm not, I'm he's not, my biggest hater. I, I love your accent. I, I Glad love, to have you here this I, morning. I love the way you say on, and I like that. Okay. Well, wow. well, the East Coast vernacular. <laughs> We're going to have Randy okay. just read the dictionary for us this morning. <laughs> Fill an hour with that. Uh, it's the warm and humid outside this morning, and we are looking at another warm and humid afternoon. Temperatures climbing up into the upper 80s. Our forecast has been pretty unchanged all week long, and that is not changing for you today. High temperatures near 90 degrees. Looking outside, still dark out. Sunrise just over an hour away. Again, another sunny, beautiful day on tap for today and tomorrow before storms return this weekend. We're talking about that coming up here in a few minutes. That's your forecast first. A series of states quickly moved to ban abortion weeks after conception. Tuesday, Alabama joined that list, passing the most restrictive abortion bill in the country. That's right, and setting the stage for a potential Supreme Court showdown. Camila Bernal is in Washington to explain. A crowd convenes in Alabama's capital, waving signs and protesting the most restrictive abortion bill in the country. The passion echoed in the Senate chambers. You just aborted the state of Alabama. You just raped Alabama with this bill. Alabama's bill bans abortion at every stage of pregnancy. Those seeking an abortion would not be punished, but doctors performing the procedure would face 99 years in prison. Women would only be able to get an abortion if their life is at risk. There is no exception for rape or incest. In my district, the women do not want it in law, the elimination of uh, rape and incest. Alabama joins four other states this year that passed bills limiting abortion and 11 other states that introduced similar legislation this year. We must do everything that we can to protect life. Alabama's lawmakers say their bill is specifically designed to go to the Supreme Court and challenge the law of the land, Roe v. Wade. The makeup on the Supreme Court has changed where there's possibly enough conservatives on there who would believe Roe v. Wade is incorrectly decided. Governor Kay Ivey says it is now time for the U.S. Supreme Court to review the Roe v. Wade decision, which gave women the constitutional right to end pregnancy. To a crime alert now, a Lincoln Parish Sheriff's deputy is in custody for sex crimes involving juveniles. 35-year-old Christopher Sparks is charged with sexual battery and molestation. Louisiana State Police were arrested him after the Lincoln Parish Sheriff's Office contacted them over complaint. Investigators have not released details about the allegations. Sparks has resigned from the police department prior to his arrest. He was booked into the Lincoln Parish Jail on half a million dollars bond. Family and friends are channeling their grief almost one month after 13-year-old Sebastian Martinez drowned in stormwater filled drainage canal. When he died, um, a bunch of the homeless people started coming out where he had been feeding them and giving to them that where nobody knew. Sebastian's aunt is feeding the streets of Bauchenville from her kitchen. She and his mother have joined forces with another nonprofit, Lazarus Mission. The pantry once full is now emptying out as the need grows. It gives me total satisfaction knowing that, that I can just be a small part of what's going on in this wonderful community. I guess that's why I'm so determined to be at every one of them. <laughs> to show people there, it, you don't have to turn to drugs. You don't have to turn to bad things because something happens in your life. Sebastian's mother and aunt see their cause as a way to fight gang violence and drugs. If you'd like to donate food, you can do so through a link to this story on MyRclamist.com.
It's a really good story. Parking lot renovations are paving the way for improvements at the Monroe Civic Center and the Saul Adler Recreational Center. About nine acres of Civic Center parking will be ripped down to the base and rebuilt, costing about $900,000 and could be finished by August, weather permitting. The Saul Adler project will cost more than $100,000, including interior work. Monroe's engineering department will have signs posted and barricades up to ease traffic problems. More construction happening over in El Dorado as well. Northwest Avenue is the hub for all things restaurants and businesses, but one lot under construction really has the town buzzing. The SBG Construction Company has been making progress on a vacant lot next to McDonald's. It used to house the Old Villas and Little Brothers restaurant. Many residents in the town have been wondering what will occupy the new spot. The Chamber of Commerce is interested in anyone who has suggestions about restaurants they would like to see. They sacrificed so much to keep our country free, and yet there are hundreds of homeless veterans living on the streets of the Arklamas. Our second annual Homeless Veterans Food Drive is now underway. Last year, we collected 10 and a half tons of food. NBC10 is partnering with the United Way, the Wellspring, and Max Fresh Markets once again this year. You can drop off any non-perishable food items at any Max Fresh Market, the Jackson Street Church of Christ, First United Methodist Church in Monroe, and right here at the NBC10 studios in West Monroe. Together, we can get our homeless veterans the support they need. Well, whether you've lived in Louisiana all your life or you're new to the Pelican State, you know there is no place quite like Louisiana. Randy, you're right. All day today, we're taking a look at things that are uniquely Louisiana. We start in Baton Rouge with a museum that tells the state's story. Jaron Jordan has a story in the state's capital. Greetings from Louisiana, a salutation hard to miss for anyone visiting the Capitol Park Museum. We get people coming in from all over the world. Um, are able to come in and we are able to share um, Louisiana's history and her culture and really what makes her special. And there is a lot that makes Louisiana special from her history to her food, not to mention her culture. It's all archived here inside the museum, just steps away from Louisiana's state capital. The state museum has been around since the early 1900s. Um, so we have objects dating back um, to the Poverty Point Indians. Um, we have objects you know, just a few years old. Joey David is the museum's curator and knows about every artifact included in the sprawling three-floor facility. Louisiana giants like Huey Long and Louis Armstrong. Um, we have a full-size shrimp boat in our gallery that goes from the floor all the way to the ceiling. Um, our civil rights section, and then that's just the first floor. Head to the third floor, and a lesson in Louisiana culture awaits as you tour every region of the state, from seeing original Mardi Gras Indians garb to a massive sugar cane tool. There's a piece of what makes Louisiana what she is in every corner. Original headstone for Governor Long. Um, people walk by the Capitol and they see the big statue where he's buried today. Um, but that's not originally what was there. But we have that headstone here in our museum. The Capitol Park Museum in Baton Rouge is the largest and newest in the state's nine museum system and tells the story of Louisiana that can only happen in the Bayou State. And you can only find it uniquely in Baton Rouge. All right, we want you to tell us what you think is uniquely Louisiana right now. Go to our Facebook page and tell us what you love about Louisiana or what you think makes this state stand out. All day we'll be going through your comments and what you share could appear right here on the show. Three words, fried alligator bites. Never had them. You're missing out. I got to try them. All right. You do. On yeah. my to-do list. All right, so coming up, we have, what do we have coming up? Oh. Weather, of course. I mean, Reed, he's No, not legend. yet. <laughs> Get on my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> we'll introduce you to a nine-year-old boy making a big difference in the wrestling community. Plus, we introduce you to Bo Palmer and Shara's mission about helping youngsters after the deadly tornado coming up. First, read that commute forecast. Yeah, I got the fishing game on, Chris. I get away one hour for the commute cast. Almost. Still, though, looking nice outside. It's a little humid out there. Looking at more sunshine for today and tomorrow before. Storms turn this weekend. Maybe even a couple becoming severe. Get all those details when we come back. But first, here's a look at your fishing game forecast.